Since its first release, InDesign has structured and organized many creative features into panels. Now, there are a lot of panels in InDesign specific to various types of jobs, which not all of us will be using initially. So we won't need to use every single panel. In InDesign, we have the flexibility to move these around to best suit our own unique needs to create a customized setup. Once we have a setup we like, we can then save this into what is called a workspace. At this early stage where I am introducing you to the program, it is a good time for us to look at how we can tailor the program to our specific needs. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at panels and workspaces in Adobe InDesign. And later on, I will also be recommending a workspace that I use that I find really effective. So let's jump into InDesign. So to begin, I just want to open a quick document to demonstrate the panels and workspaces. You can either create a new document or open the doc I have opened here. This document can be found in the download folder that comes with this class. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder in the description. With the download folder open, click into folder three, document samples, click into folder two, double-sided, click into the folder pamphlet multifold folder, and click to open the Phantom Motorbike Pamphlet in Design Document, and the document will open. Now for this document, I'm using the font Typebold. If you have not already downloaded all the fonts for this course, this is a free font that you can acquire online. To get this font, I would recommend you check out the course fonts page on the course PDF document. This is a list of all the fonts that are used in this class and where to get them. Simply click on the typoed link and this will take you straight to where you can download it. Close the document, install the font, open it back up again and you should be able to follow along just fine. So if you have InDesign open and wish to follow along, you will need to first come up to window, scroll down to workspace and then scroll down and select essentials. Then, to make sure we all have the same setup, we must again come up to a window, workspace, and then scroll down and select Reset Essentials. This will then set the interface to the Essentials default layout, and you should have something that looks like this. Now, don't worry if your setup is not exactly the same as mine. What you should have is the default settings. Just follow along and you should be fine. What you will come to learn later on is that you can customize this layout, but what would help right now is for you to have the same or similar layout so you can follow along with me. Over here on the right, you have a slim panel that currently contains a panel with three tabs. Here we can see properties, pages, and CC libraries. Now these panels contain various tool options and properties regarding objects in the canvas area. What you will soon discover is that these panels are essential in order to produce work in Adobe InDesign. In order to have a swift workflow in this program, it will help to have a comfortable setup of these panels. So at the moment, we are looking at the default setup for the Essentials panel workspace. If we look at the top right of our interface, we can see we have the word Essentials, and next to this is a drop-down icon. If we press this, we can see a list. Here we have Advanced, Book, Digital Publishing, Essentials, and Typography, to name a few. As we start to select these, we will notice the panel layout changing. This is InDesign attempting to create an ideal workspace for that given task. If you're using InDesign for working on a book, for example, then clicking on Book, InDesign will offer an ideal panel setup for working on a book in InDesign. If you're using InDesign for just typography, then by clicking on Typography, InDesign will offer an ideal panel setup for typography, and so on. So I'm going to come up and click on the dropdown, but notice this time at the top I have one called GD Workspace. This is a personal setup I have saved before, so don't worry if you don't see this in your InDesign. If I click this, watch what happens. Just like earlier, the panels have changed, but this time they have changed to my personal setup. Here you can see there are a lot more panels here this time, and the panels are arranged slightly different from the other panel setups. So this is my workspace, and this is what I find works really well for me. I actually use a lot of tools in InDesign, so I have arranged my panels in this way. I have arranged the panels in a column on the far right, they are clearly visible at all times, and the various panels are arranged in accordance to their context. I have all my color panels at the top, I have my layers, links, and pages under this, and I have my stroke, character, and paragraph panels at the bottom. Also, you can see I have a row of icons here just to the left of my visible panels. These are panels I like to keep tucked away and pull out when I need them. As I click on them, you will see them pop out. Easy. 
So now I'm going to show you how you can create a custom workspace like this. Before we begin, I'm going to come back to the top of my workspace setup and click Essentials, and this is going to put me back to the default setup. What we're going to do now is carefully click and hold a panel tab name and drag it out like so. What we just did there was separate the panel. I'll do this again on the next tab, carefully click and hold on a panel tab name and drag it out like so, and again for the last tab. And now I have all my tabs here separated and floating on my screen. Next, I'll come up to the top menu and click Window. Now upon click, we will see a long list. This is a list of all the panels we can activate here in InDesign. I'll start by clicking into Color and click the Swatches panel. Upon click, that will appear and I'll drag that into the middle like so. And I'll just remove any other panels that appear with it. Next, I'll click on the Layers panel. Notice that here it also includes other panels inside. Just like earlier, I'll drag this out and separate it for now. Next, I'll come into Type and Tables. I'll click on the Character panel, the Paragraph panel, the Effects panel, and the Gradient panel. So now I have a bunch of panels all scattered around. Next, I'm going to make sense of this. Starting with the Swatches panel, I'll grab the CC Libraries panel and drag it into the Swatches panel. What you're looking for is the blue line inside the panel, not the top, but inside. On release, you will notice the tab is now placed inside the Swatches panel, and that is now essentially one panel group. Great. I'm going to do this again, but this time I'm going to drag the Links tab into the Layers panel, drag the Paragraph tab into the Character panel, and the Pages tab into the Layer. If I put my mouse cursor over the bottom right of the panel, I can click and drag out to expand. So now I have some panel groups and some single panels here. Now I'm going to organize these. By clicking on the top bar of each panel group, I'm going to drag these into the middle. This time, I'm going to click and hold on the top bar of the Layers, Links, and Pages panel, and begin to move it around. But this time, move this just into the bottom of the panel group containing the Swatches panels. What you're looking for is a blue line across the bottom. When you see this, release. This will then snap that panel group to the bottom, and they are now joined. And if I click and hold the top bar of the top panel group, you can see they move together. Excellent. Now I have a neat little panel group, and I'll drag it over until I can see a blue line on the left-hand side of my screen. I'll release, and that will snap to fit the panels to the side of my screen like so. Easy. These are now fixed to the side of the screen. Here I can click and drag on the left side to pull them out and push them in. I can click on the tabs, and I can click and drag on the bottom of each tab to expand and contract. Now, if you wish to customize the order in which your tabs are arranged in each panel group, you can simply click and drag the tab to the left or right like so. Okay, so with my last few panels, I'll come and drag my character panel down to the bottom of my layers, links, and pages. And just like before, I will see the blue line, and upon release, that will snap into the column there. Now I have a few panels left. This time, I'm going to do something different. This time, I'm going to click on the properties panel and click on the two arrows in the top right, and this will collapse the panel into what looks like a small tab. This time, I'll click on the icon and drag it over and hover on the left side of the panel edge. Again, with the blue line, I'll release and snap it in place. Now, if I drag this in, we will see it's now an icon. And if I click on this, it will expand and show the panel. Again, I'll click the small icon on the top right of the gradient panel, Click the icon, drag it over and under the properties icon and release, and now we have another. One last time for effects. And now we have the visible panels on the right and some quick panels on the left to access real easy. If we want to add more panels, again, this can be done easily. I'll come up to window. I'll click on stroke and effects. I'll be sure to drag them out and remove any other panels that appear. Drag the icons and again up and under on the left side, and we can continue to add panels as we wish. Now, one very last panel to activate, and that's the control panel. I'll come up to Window and click on Control, and now we have the control panel at the top there. And this is a nice setup I find works really well for me. I have my main panels on the side and some really helpful panels I can simply click on when I need them. So once you're happy with your panel setup, come up to the top menu, click on Window, scroll down to Workspace, and then come across and scroll and click on New Workspace. I will pop a window and I'm going to name this New Space. I'll make sure to capture panel locations and customizations and click OK. If we come back up to the top and click on one of the other workspaces, we can then come back again and activate the workspace we just created. 
And as we continue to add and change our panel setup in this workspace, here I can bring in another panel. For example, I'll open character and paragraph styles. And in design, we remember it and save any changes to our custom workspace. Easy. So that is how you can create and customize a workspace in Adobe InDesign and save it. This is going to make using the program far more comfortable for you and again, empower you to control how you want to use the program yourself. Now, one of the crucial features to learn in InDesign is links. When we create and build our layouts, it's very common to bring images into our document created in other programs like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. These may be raster images, vector images, PDFs, and either other InDesign documents. One of the most important panels to keep an eye on in InDesign is the links panel. This is where we manage everything we bring into InDesign. And it's really important to know about this and how it works. So in the next video, we will be taking a closer look at the links panel and the key things we need to be aware of. So see you in the next video.